All right, everybody, we are back for another episode of Bar Shifts and Bullshit. This is Lily Lavender, and we have Bar Mom with Jay Bird. Howdy, howdy. We are calling this episode 31, Leading a Horse to Water. Yep. And it has to deal with management and the things they've got to go through. So Bar uh, Bar Mom uh, works with me at at our location at at present date, but she's also managed at other locations. Mm-hmm. So she's definitely been on both sides of the tracks. She's worked under people and worked above people. And uh, what we wanted to do is shed light on some different situations with uh, the leadership roles and the hurdles that they have to jump. Uh, so for the cheap servers and bartenders that don't quite grasp not getting their way, <laughs> we wanted to discuss why this is sometimes an issue. So I've stated a lot so many times throughout this past year that what we do takes a whole lot of teamwork. Mm-hmm. So if we have that one person that's not a team player, it that's like a crack in the shield right there. Mm-hmm. And it makes everyone like flounder around trying to get caught up and everyone's trying to help everybody else except that one person. I got pissed off yesterday. So pissed because I had two bussers, right? But they could only work together. And they helped the servers. They went and did everything for the servers like they're supposed to do, but left the bar completely out of it. And so I was completely busy the whole afternoon. And it made me so mad that I had to do everything by myself. I was bitching to a bunch of people. So they tried to go to our GM and to the owners. And the owner was the one who was helping me out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, (laughs) she did my dishes yesterday. I've actually met your owner. I was like, I grew up. Knowing, uh, knowing owner there, and she's yeah. like, go get her that one. Oh, yes, like, she is. Uh, both of them are, and, uh, and her husband's work just boss the They're water. amazing. And he does that shit where he'll, like, fly into work and doesn't want to smile, and, uh-huh. like, talk shit the whole way. Like, <laughs> he's, he's old school. Like, he's, like, he's a different one. Yeah, I absolutely love them, but, like, they tried to get the busters to come and help me, and, you know, they tried to explain it to them, and they just, they couldn't pick it up. I don't know what it is. The rest of the busters have it down, but certain ones just don't. Yeah, I think that most of the time, a lot of uh, employees just don't see specific areas as part of the restaurant. Yeah. So you kind of have to push them mm-hmm. towards those specific spots and, and help them. Hey, like, just because you're on tables doesn't mean that the bar isn't a part of the restaurant. Exactly. Maybe, you know, help them out. <laughs> And it's like they could see that there's other people waiting to sit down at the bar mm-hmm. and they couldn't come and like help out. Like I had to do it all by myself. Yeah, no, we don't have that issue. People just sit down at dirty spots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Never my, seen that before. No, <laughs> my favorite part is when like I'm on the polar opposite side of the bar uh-huh. and I see people get up and then I immediately see two people sit down with dirty dishes mm-hmm. in front of them. Oh, jeez. Like, I'll walk with glassware that's dirty over towards the dishwasher, mm-hmm. and I'll see them, and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, let me get these plates out of the way, are you all finished with this? <laughs> and they'll look at me like, these aren't ours. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, ew, you sat at a dirty spot. <laughs> Gross. Like, why would you do that? <laughs> it's disgusting. Just little pokes at people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, like, curl up your nose, don't even say anything, just like, right. ah, all right, that's our tears. <laughs> Oh, you're silver too. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what, 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 I, what I hate seeing is like you'll see guests, like at our bar in particular, is uh, people be eating or whatever, and then we'll have a bar line, mm-hmm. and then the next set of guests will like stand over the like people at the bar. Uh-huh. Like that drives me nuts. Oh, it's yes. so disrespectful. It like, like it's, 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 it's that's really, really like annoying. We got people eating seventy to hundred dollar steaks. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, like they don't want people. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want people breathing down their neck while they're eating their steak. Like, no. Do you want a bite? <laughs> like, I just <laughs> put it over my shoulder. Like, here you go, buddy. If you want some. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Or we'll have one seat, but two guests will come up, and then and then they'll try to sit like in each other's lap. <laughs> like, it's hard. It really is. <laughs> oh, yeah. So these are instances where like managers and owners. They, they are trying to take action, fix problems. Mm-hmm. They have a lot on their plate that they have to deal with. So when they're talking to like their employees and whatnot, it would be super helpful if they don't start rolling their eyes. Mm-hmm. Like your owner, your manager is having a conversation with you. And I mean, some of them are kids. I get it. This is their first job. Mm-hmm. But 
it's called respect yeah. and it's called and um it's work ethics like this is right. when you start learning these things and if you start rolling your eyes or copying an attitude like that's gonna wreak havoc on your career oh, yeah no it absolutely is well and it just kind of like that that amount of disrespect just kind of sets the toll for you at a later date it does like if you if you don't have enough respect to acknowledge that like a, a manager's talking to you and then is giving you a task because that's their job mm-hmm. and it's your job to do it <laughs> Uh, and people don't quite like uh, yeah. this whole it's not my job mindset is just taking taking places by storm mm-hmm. uh, and I get it nobody uh, uh, we we fight with it all the freaking time about yeah. um, you know side work yeah side work. <laughs> it's not, running side work and side work yeah uh-huh. it's not my job uh, my job mentality but if we and we've been discussing this at all, uh, for a long time now if we can get like an A team where it doesn't matter, they don't have that mentality, they just fill in the gaps where it can go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It just makes things so much smoother. It does. Uh, knowing that, like, if, I have, if I'm if i in the middle of something and something needs to be cleared, I can look back and know that it's already done. I can yeah. trust that it's already done. Exactly. Yeah, and the next step's already taken place. I, I love working with somebody that just knows how to fill in the gaps. Or vice versa. If they can take lead on everything and let me fill in the gaps, I love that. Mm-hmm. You know, like, as long as... As long as we can keep moving and everything's so freaking smooth and I don't have to worry about my next step not being, like, accounted for, uh-huh. then that just makes for an insanely smooth shift. It does. I like that. So but, I understand their mindset, wanting to hire nothing but team players, giving them a trial period. So that's that's something I would discuss. <laughs> I would love to discuss that. It's trial periods. Yes. Yeah. We, get, we give, or I say we, management hires people on all the time and says, okay, we're going to give you a 90-day trial period, mm-hmm. see how you fit with, you know, the uh, with the other employees and see how well you do. Uh-huh. I <laughs> have not witnessed. Actually, I witnessed it one time in the last <laughs> couple of weeks. Because I actually pushed for yeah, that. Yeah, because you pushed for it, yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. That, <laughs> which I appreciate because that was driving me nuts. Mm. But, like, uh where they don't enforce the 90 day trial period. Uh-huh. And I was like, and that's just something that needs to be acknowledged. Not, and now, I, I ain't gonna lie, we're kind of going on a bashing on management all this time. We're supposed to show you empathy with it. It's but, okay. You can throw your bashingness towards me and I'll just be part of it. That's, yeah. that's a legit problem. Like, uh, you got 90 days to find out if you're a good employee or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what was crazy is when I was, when I used to work in construction, I was probably in different factories and stuff like that. They, they held to that 90 day trial period. As yeah. they should. And yeah, they every should. Every single management, because like I, I used to like it. And I, I would look at these employees that would go through the 90 day trial period just busting ass. Mm-hmm. Like, best shit as you've ever seen. And I talked to my manager, I was like, I want him to work. And he was like, he's like, he's got 90 days. He's like, he's going to show you his absolute best work, work ethic. They honestly. always do and in the first the 90. Day Phew, right mm-hmm. off, right yeah, off. He the was board. like, it never he was fails. like, minus it by three. That's the employee you got. That's a, and that's how he always told it. I was like, oh man. <laughs> so it's usually like the tryhards mm-hmm. in the first ninety days when they try extra, extra hard. Then you know that that's not legit. That's not who they truly are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and I, I like doing the the math. Like, if you're like absolutely busting ass, I don't have to worry about every single little thing. Whatever. Yeah. I know that. You'll slack off a little bit. Everybody does. Everyone like, does. We get comfortable. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You suck. And, like, yeah. I feel like the whole 90-day trial thing, it's it's so perfect. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I know within, if, if I'm hiring somebody, I know within five minutes. But, yeah. If that. If yeah. they're even going to work out. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll sit down, I'll, I'll look at their, you know, applications, and I'll be like, Hmm, this seems like an interesting candidate. Let's call them and get them in for an interview. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that, you know, with hiring that I've always seen to kind of be an issue is where, let's say, I'll make an interview for somebody, but they can only come at a specific time and it's not during the time that I'm at work. Right. So I'll put it on the calendar, you know, I'll print out all their application stuff. Um, and then get in contact with the manager who's going to be there on that shift uh-huh. and let them know, hey, you've got an interview coming in at so so o'clock in the afternoon or in the morning. Um, you know, just sit down with them and chit-chat with them. Like, I scheduled, let's say I was supposed to be at work at 3. I'd schedule an interview at 1. That manager 
would leave those people sitting there until I got there. Oh, no. Or tell no. them to come back. Oh, no. Yeah, that is a struggle that happens. Or they would be completely oblivious to the fact that there's an interview set up, even though 15 times mm-hmm. I've made mention of it, told them, handed them an application, and said, look, they're fucking over. Uh-huh. And done. Like, yeah. nothing. Blank. Well, blank face. I want to say it's like at our location, nobody's outside. For like, <laughs> like nobody goes in the dining room. So if they're just chilling there, they're chilling there for like ever, waiting for yeah. somebody, waiting for like a noise. Yeah. For oh, somebody. Wow. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, which makes interviews kind of sketchy. That like, yeah, it's very intimidating. A hundred percent. I mean, I, there was a, a a girl like standing in front of Beats for like a half an hour. Yeah. When I walked in, and the security person was like, "Hey." <laughs> that person's here for an interview and they've been here for a while. Like, we would love. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I like your dad. That's a good way to find out dedication. Yeah. 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 It really like, was. They're like, man, I'm it begging really, for a job. It Somebody really talk was. To me. And the funny part is, is that I went into the uh, into the office when I got there and I was like, hey, there's somebody outside for an interview. And they were like, there is? <laughs> I'm like, what is going on here? Yeah. So, Communication. Like, do you need me to sit down with them and do the interview? I will. Like, yeah. not a problem. I mean, then no, I'm not paid for that anymore, but. No. Well, and uh, resumes speak volumes, too. And we've, uh, like, yet again, we've been in this yeah. hurdle where people say they have all this experience and they really don't. Mm-hmm. Now, you and I have been bartending for a long time. You've been bartending for a lifetime. Yes. Okay. So, so uh, me personally, I, the way somebody either sets up their will, or the way, or even be, or the way they'll grab a bottle to pour drinks, yeah, I can tell whether they've done it before. Same, yep, same. Like it's, it's a legit thing. The problem with some of some management, I'm not saying ours, I'm not saying anybody else's, some management don't know these things, and the best person to like confer with or like or have a conversation with is your staff. Yes, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, but and that kind of goes back to the ninety day trial period. Mm-hmm. You can find out somebody's lying about their experience or not. Because we had an employee, mm-hmm. what a crazy, uh, crazy mm-hmm. one. <laughs> Same. And I think we've actually Same. told this story maybe on a on an earlier episode. Uh, and she used to bartend at a strip club. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. But knows no cocktails, no yep. whatsoever. So, I'm not saying she's not saying she can't bartend. I'm just saying. Uh, if you're in a strip club, all you're doing is pouring shots. Yeah. Or beer. That's it. That's yeah. all they do. Whiskey shots, vodka shots, tequila Pop shots. Popping tops. Or uh-huh. you know, a well vodka on the rocks. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Well, that's, that's what we do here. Yeah. But I feel like my best bartenders always come from like dive bars. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I will say, yes, a lot of the times that is very accurate. Um, you know, my whole thing with if somebody has bartending experience on there, I might call their previous like previous employee and be mm-hmm. like, hey, how was this person? Yeah. And I mean, if legally, they can say whether or not they are able to be rehired at that location. So, and that's essentially But it. legally, they're not allowed to tell you why they were dismissed. No, Correct. they cannot. Yeah. So Correct. They can say whether or not they feel like they're a good employee or a mm-hmm. good asset to certain companies mm-hmm. or whatever, but they can't tell you. Oh, well, they slipped on the balls, or like, yeah. oh, like they got fired because they're doing cocaine. No, that. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> they can't say well. and they're, come out eventually. Yeah, it will. <laughs> but they're also allowed to talk about their strong points. Yes. But they cannot talk about their weaknesses, right. why they were fired, right. if mm-hmm. they were fired, if and nothing to really hinder you from yeah. getting the job. Right. But they can leave subtle hints. I will say it's it's good to have friends who are managers of other restaurants. It is. Um, because then. Sometimes that little slip in edge can, can happen yeah. with, you know, giving a small, tiny little peek. Well, in, mm-hmm. in our location, like in this general area, we cycle. Like, oh, every, like every single place around here. That, it's that, because that, it's such a small area. Uh, yeah, You're I, limited on your options. Like, I never would have found this new one if she didn't come from another state. I don't know. I really like this new one. Mm-hmm. Big fan. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan. But. But yeah, so we like every, it's a huge turnover rate for, between bartenders and we're always fighting for mm-hmm. which ones we know. Like we'll steal them from other restaurants and we know. Yeah, we really definitely will. Uh, but you can always tell when somebody's getting fired. And like if a bartender's like looking for a job, you know they got fired. Oh yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know they're not any good. Oh yeah. 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 If they're coming in with paperwork already printed out. Yeah. They, they've been needing a job for a while. Honestly, people, like if people aren't, I don't usually get hired Unless people are asking me if I want a job, mm-hmm. yeah. like uh, like one of our 
buddies asked me if I wanted a bartending gig because he because she heard that I was going to get hired at like several other locations. Oh, okay. And she was like, "Oh, we need one now. She's like, go talk to this guy now." <laughs> and uh, that's how I got the job, hmm. which I like. I, I ain't gonna lie, that gets me out on a high horse for sure. But having that reputation where like as soon as you got availability, somebody mm-hmm. wants you for yeah. a job, where they're always offering you a job. That's I, to me. That's a huge flex, um, yeah. as far as like your skill level and your work ethic. It is a hundred percent. You know, it's it's when you've got people who are wanted, and and you hear your bartenders saying, "Hey, we should bring in this person," or or we know somebody who's looking for a job. They would work out great for us, mm-hmm. and you don't listen to that. I mean. Yeah. What what are you what are you doing? Yeah, like, like your bartenders are the ones who know people the best. Oh, like that, we, we're the ones that have to work with them. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're the ones I'm begging. Yeah, for. I don't. Yep. I don't want to work with negative Nancy. No. Like, well, and I've, I've I've told our management a couple times. Like I'll like I'll watch the interview and I'll be like, this is not good. This is not gonna work <laughs> out. And, I, they'll, and they'll be like, I've uh, told them I'll sit <laughs> in on interviews so, with them. I'm, I'm like, I have them. my three questions. Yeah. My well, technically four mm-hmm. uh, questions that I want answered from mm-hmm. the person that you're wanting to hire for a bartending position. Yep. Mm-hmm. Number one, name me three white wines. <laughs> Number two, name me three red wines. And not, uh-huh. brand, not just brands. What kind? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? I mean, I don't need to know that Naomi is is a red wine. Mm-hmm. What kind of wine is it? What type? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Give me that. Yeah. I agree. How do you make an old fashioned? Oh my is God, my, that is, is another big and one. And then that's why we usually give this information, but today we're going to keep this a secret. You yeah. Know, you know, research. How to bartend? Like the past interview. And then my last question. What goes into Captain and Coke? Oh, my God. <laughs> and I swear to God, I want to say maybe the last five people we've hired wouldn't be able to pass that test. Oh, Are you kidding it's me? So hand, it's so hand to God. It's bad. I swear. It's bad. <laughs> And you know, it's hilarious because the servers, when they're at a table and their customers are telling them what drink they want, mm-hmm. the servers don't even know to ask them, well, do they want spiced rum, white rum? Do you like, have a preference you, on your vodka? Exactly. Your gin, your rum? Mm-hmm. On your bourbon? Yeah. yeah. Anything. I've, I've got to have it now. Like, they don't give me specifics. I just, it's well. It's well. Like, you're, you're getting, you're getting, you're stuff. getting Crystal Palace. <laughs> 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 yeah, you get Everclear. I don't even sell it. Oh, uh, no. We'll just stick it in the bottle. Yeah, we got a bottle of room for you. <laughs> Look, I'll save this for later, but you deserve this. <laughs> So uh, another thing that I want to discuss is scheduling. Uh-huh. Uh, yes. So uh, we are, I mean, I feel like we're full on this front we, uh, uh, in a lot of different ways. We, yeah. We've got a really, really good management team as far as like scheduling and them, mm-hmm. uh, them, you know, understanding that, you know, we have lives and they don't want to own us kind mm-hmm. of thing. It's actually really cool. Yeah. I, I really, really like it. They do a great job. And uh, they, but they will cater to so many situations Ooh. that's just kind of not, smart yeah uh, like uh for instance sundays are usually really really hectic mm-hmm. and the reason they're hectic for us in our location is that we close two hours early and mm-hmm. we do the same amount of coverage we do on saturday night mm-hmm. yes. usually so we're cramming all these people but nobody wants to work sundays because they suck Ten percent funding. Ten percent. oh my god <laughs> like, just push it through man yeah. which i, I like it because i make a good amount of money and out money early time. i yeah. mean I, who doesn't yeah. want to be home before 12 o'clock yeah, it's, a, it's a glorious thing. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, like, if I can make almost as much money as I did on Saturday, two hours, like, I'm going to kill it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to bust that out. Like, I'm going to bust it out. But nobody wants to work Sundays because you have to. You yeah. Have to turn, and burn, turn and burn for those five hours, well, two hours before you start your shift. But yeah. right now, nobody wants to work Sundays. So they yeah. just pile all these reservations and all these people on. The eight people that want to show up for Oh, it. good lord. Yes. Because yes. they're like, oh, I can't work Sundays. Yeah. Right. Some, some dudes, Sundays are for the Lord. I can't work. Oh, yeah. Which is funny because they. The amount of drinking and drugs that happens from those people yeah. that say that. <laughs> oh, you wow. need the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, I, I would say you need Jesus, but I, ain't, I ain't know you ain't gonna find a good word. <laughs> like, I knew you were yesterday. You do need it. Look, my favorite joke to make on that is uh, what church you go to? Bedside Baptist? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> 
Oh, no, no. I, I will say, you know, as, as, as a manager, it is, you know, it was always my goal to try and, and not cater to, but to give everybody the schedule that they wanted. Uh -huh. You know, if I had people that were hired on on full availability, I'm going to use them for the full availability. Mm -hmm. If I only had people that could work specific days, I'd use them for those specific days. And I would say the rare chance that people requested off, which it's not rare. If you <laughs> look at the request off book, it is filled to the brim. I mean, names are over names, and, and people are like crossing out Just things. Just scribbling yeah. over. Oh, oh, like, oh, he, no, he's he not busy that day. That <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that struggle is real. Um, and it, it goes back to the hiring process. You know, when you're hiring people on, you, you always want to try and hire people with open availability, unless mm -hmm. you're looking to fill a specific, you know, daytime, nighttime, whatever day of the week. Um, so if you hire somebody on who has that full, full availability, and then a month later they're like, yeah, I can't work Sundays. Okay, well, that's not what you were hired on for. No. So, like, yeah. don't, don't switch it up and have a yeah. job. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I mean, there are exceptions for people who, like, who have school. Yeah. I. I totally get that you know mm -hmm. like when I was managing down south it was um, we had a, a local community college we also had a university nearby where I would manage so yeah, well, uh, you want to know some crazy shit oh and I hear it all the freaking time shit. all these women all, I say women it's, it's men too don't get me wrong <laughs> but, all these people that are going to school right now take like they're like I can't work Fridays I can't work Fridays because I got school yeah that's a lie Blame it is. Blame it is a lie. Because there's no school on Fridays for college kids over here. No. <laughs> I, I, will, I will say um, most of the people that I know, they take 18 credit hours, right? So that's two classes Monday, Monday Wednesday, Friday. Mm -hmm. That's two classes Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh -huh. What time do you think those classes are? <laughs> Might I ask? <laughs> <laughs> They're in the fucking morning. Yeah. Like, yeah. okay, so I get it. You know, maybe you want to go back home and, and do all of your research papers or get a head start on whatever, you know, classwork that you need to have finished or homework. Mm -hmm. I guess it wouldn't even be called that at that no. point in time. No. Really? Well, half these classes now, after COVID, it's all online. Oh, Almost, yeah. Like, uh, it blows my mind that your kids are in high school and have so many online courses. I know. Yeah. Yeah. They weird, do. Like, that was not. That was not a Well, that's considered no. alternative. So yeah. it's an alternative study yeah. to have it online. I'm, I'm so old we didn't have online courses. I know. Same. We didn't I, either. I fought. Like, when, when I heard that everything was going to be on the computer, I was so computer illiterate to the whole situation. I was like, absolutely fucking not. Yeah. I, 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 I would have loved it, but I would have gotten nothing done. <laughs> <laughs> Watching cartoons, Wheel of Fortune comes on, Bob Barker. <laughs> I mean, the price is right. Yeah. The most boring show. So we were like, oh, I've um, never seen this episode. Yes. So we're watching every, like, Win that series. car. Win that car. <laughs> <laughs> watching Gary's favorite. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh. Actually, yeah. Could, if we put that on at work, I, like, I could crack it. I will <laughs> say, met him before. He used to live in uh, the town where I grew up at. Oh, wow. Very interesting gentleman. Very interesting. He, he strikes story. me as creepy. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've met him, too. <laughs> and, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy. So we were all cooking at the same place. This one I used to cook there. Okay. And uh, we found out that, uh, that Jerry Springer was going to come through, right? Mm -hmm. Like he's but like sometimes celebrities will come. They go through the kitchen. Yeah. And still, uh, uh, devoid of all the crowds or whatever. And uh, my buddy, who was the broiler chef at the time, he was like, "Okay, man." He's like, "I'm so freaking excited, Jerry's going to come through here." He's like, "When he's coming through, comes through here, he's like, we got to start chanting. We got to start chanting." And I was like, "Yeah, man, we're going to start chanting." Oh my god. <laughs> this feels like it's gonna be a bad Yeah. So, like all of us in the kitchen, like we're all ready to like ready up and you know, we're we're ready to start chanting and Jerry starts walking through. And then we all throw hands up, but the only one that's yelling is that guy. <laughs> we just gotta let him sit there. And he's like dying. Oh, that's evil. But he's so committed. Like he just kept on doing it. Right? Right. Like, just oh my god. And, like he got through the kitchen and he looks over at us and he's like Fuck all you guys. <laughs> like, y'all are all assholes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, my, my other manager was like in love with Jerry Springer. Oh, She's, God. Was, that is the most embarrassing shit I've ever been a part of in my life. <laughs> He's like, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> like, it grilled his ass about it. Wow. And he was like, well, hell, he's like, 
<laughs> Everybody was the same on point. He said, I wouldn't be the only one getting in trouble right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. oh, uh, God. Is that true? Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. But I, I miss that prank, man. It's, I was all about that kind of stuff back in the day. Uh, we were mean to each other in the kitchen. Isn't that where you're supposed to be mean to people? Uh, that's yes. Where that's where I learned to be mean to people. Yes. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, I got a buddy in there that still points out like the dance dance in the walls. He was like, yeah. "Huh, I wonder who did that." And I was like, oh, yeah, that's it. Mm, "Gee, I wonder." <laughs> not saying that I was angry back then. I just did. I worked. I worked a- ang- angry. Back. Back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> different, different life. At least you're punching things and not people. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, that guy just—I killed that guy. I was like, I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just calling that, it's that big farm up the road, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bro. Uh, 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 we were talking about scheduling, scheduling yeah. yeah, and uh, being able to adjust. Uh, keep in mind that if you don't get the day off, it just they're doing. Uh, as far as like our manager, they're doing the best they can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody's asking. You can't give everybody yeah. what they want all the time. And you that, really and can't. That's the harshest mm-hmm. reality is that everybody's not going to get their way all the time. Yeah, and uh, you gotta you gotta keep in mind this is life. This mm-hmm. part of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, this yeah. Is, the same shit that we all have to go through. My my favorite is scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Oh God! You you do me a favor, I'll give you that day off. Mm-hmm. And that happens so often. Oh yeah. You know, like I get it. Things kind of slide on through in people's personal lives, and they forget. Oh, it's my my kid's birthday. This yeah. Day. Crap! I have to work. Oh, yeah. oh no! What do I do? You know? Okay. Listen, I'm short staffed on this day. Will you work this day and I'll give you this day off? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great compromise. It is. You know, like, you help me out, I got you. Not a problem. And I, I will say one of the biggest hurdles is you, we, as managers, when I say we, the former me <laughs> in my former life, um, <laughs> we used to have to write our schedules in accordance to um, the labor that our higher-ups would give us. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you need this many people on on this day. You need this many people on on this day. Even though we would go back, look at our sales from the previous years, and see that we don't need that many people on, but we would still have to schedule accordingly. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's that's a true bummer, because, you know, I don't want to overstaff on days. Mm -hmm. I want people to make money. I want people to be happy. I want them to be able to pay their bills, Mm -hmm. I don't know, buy that ten dollar bag of weed that they've been looking at. Um, you know, whatever it is that they need, I wanted them to be able to afford it uh-huh. and not have to continuously work, 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 work while we're overstaffed. Um, so that was always kind of one of the things that I would try and do is I would push back to my higher ups and I would say, "Look, look at our sales. Look at the volume. Mm-hmm. We don't need that many people." Well, you're only supposed to have these many tables per person. Okay, do you actually think people follow that? Yeah. Not to mention, like, when you have call-outs and all that stuff, you're asking oh, yeah. some bartenders to be like, all right, so we're fucked right now, so I need you to pick on eight instead of oh, the yeah. usual four. I mean, my Saturdays are insane. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you how. <laughs> so, speaking of Saturdays, <laughs> last Saturday, uh-huh. this might be why I took this past Saturday <laughs> off because I think I have PTSD from it. Um, so we had opened up the outside area for dining. Uh-huh. You know, the weather was beautiful. It wasn't supposed to rain. It wasn't too hot. It wasn't too cold. It was just right. Um, and I was getting a couple of tables out there. It was, it was all fine and dandy. And then nothing. Right? I literally turn around. I have eight tables. Oh eight my god. Eight. <laughs> sat almost immediately one after the other. Are you kidding me? No, I wish I wish I was. Holy crap. So, as I'm literally running to the back, I see my boss and the hostess. And I go, I still have two more fucking tables open if you want to fucking see them. <laughs> and I just, I didn't even think about it and I ran right past them. And they sat. And <laughs> I come back out and guess what? I have Two new tables sat at the two fucking oh, open ones that I had. My to, God. To, Holy hell. To be fair, our, our, be fair. our hostess. <laughs> 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 like sarcasm just kind of goes. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. way over top, man. So, oh. It's 
one of those uh, open mouth insert foot yeah. situations. <laughs> oh, like, oh, I shouldn't have been. It should have been way more literal. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. So, well, as a manager, what is the craziest situation you had to dig yourself out of? Besides that one? <laughs> that I've had to dig myself out of? Yeah, like, what's, a, what's the craziest situation that you've had to deal with that only a manager could take on? Oh. Or as? Or that you were just management for? Um, well, I can think about one situation that could, I guess, fit into that category. Um, we had a surprise visit from our boss's boss at one of my uh, at one of my restaurants, and uh, my boss decided that that would be the perfect day to leave early and leave <laughs> me alone. Right? Oh, I've had that a lot lately. I had to send a bartender home because I would say that they were violently ill but um, they were just on drugs oh um, so I was bartending taking tables running expo mm -hmm. and managing a restaurant yep and my uh, my my boss's boss literally walked through the side door with a smile on his face as I am running around like a chicken with my fucking head cut off and he looks to me and goes where's where's your boss Oh, he went home. He went, he went home. Yep. He left. And he's like, are you kidding me? I'm like, J I mean, have a search around the restaurant. If you can find him, you let me know. <laughs> I, I literally watched him pick up his keys and get in his car and drive off. Oh, oh, my God. And he goes, okay, well, what can I help you with? I said, I don't know. You want to take a table or something? <laughs> I mean, that might be helpful. Hop in the dish pit. Probably, I don't know. Something. Probably hadn't done that since. Oh, God. No. Yeah. <laughs> he looked like a chicken with his head cut off when he walked up to a table. And oh, was like, hi, wow. folks. Uh, anything I can get you to drink tonight? <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to have to make those, by the way. Just so that you're aware. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't miss that. No. Oh, m mine was um, one of my line cooks chopped off the top part of his finger on the line. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, I did that in the slides once. Oh, you were were you there for that? I was. I don't think I was there for that. But a month after he sliced off the top of his finger, I got my hand on the mandolin. Yeah, well, <laughs> nice. Well, they chop off Microwave like, food. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a nightmare. Started, yeah. I never want to go back to managing a restaurant ever. Mm -mm. I hated it. I told them they could not afford me. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Well, I no. have been asked, approached so many times since being in my current position. And I'm just like, best I can do is leader of the bar. Yeah. <laughs> and even then, you're asking well, for a little too much yeah, money. Yeah, and, <laughs> even, even, even now, everybody's going to be like, so the bar manager, like, <laughs> the bar manager, yeah. you're going to make the decision. No, no. But, I'm like, I don't like making decisions for you people. I'm paid just as much as you are. I have the same amount of responsibilities. Don't make me, don't make me pick mine. I'm just like, let me go talk to my GM and my owner. And oh, y'all yeah, can deal thing. with my bartenders mm -hmm. because they don't want to listen to me. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, and uh, there's, there's a couple different things that, like, I want to touch on uh, as far as, like, leadership and where they go. Now, I have a huge amount of respect for somebody that's willing to get his hands dirty and do the work. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had chefs that I worked with where like uh, dish guys would call out and then they would jump on the line and, and start washing dishes. They yeah. wouldn't pull somebody else to wash dishes, they'd do it themselves. Yeah. I've got a huge, like attitude, and we've discussed this uh -huh. at great length, attitude reflects leadership. Yep. If you're like, and it's hard as a manager to keep to show that face all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It really is. You're on a stage, yeah. literally. From the moment you walk in that door, that's yeah. it. Once you break, your staff breaks. Yep. Yeah, because it's not just for your customers. You got to put that face on for your staff too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to let. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of it's just kind of one of those things that if, if you got servers that are freaking out, and I've seen different managers keep it cool and like and servers and just freaking screaming and having like a meltdown in a middle break, and they'll just be like, all right, like I hear what you're saying. This is what we're gonna do to fix it. Mm -hmm. just like instead of like reacting to how they the like how the emotions are like on a rise and all this other yeah, stuff, yeah. they're just like all right. They deactivate the situation. They yes, and uh -huh. I, I have a huge amount of respect that can for people that can kind of keep that momentum. Like, yeah. Where they're they're like okay, this is the problem. This is what we're gonna fix. And this this this. Yeah. And, right. And uh, I used to I used to fuck with people all the time. They had, like. Um, at different locations mm -hmm. and different things people would come to me with all these different problems and I was like alright what would you do to fix this and it, it fucks them they just like they look at it and they're like uh, uh I was like you take a minute 
give me a solution and we'll execute it. Uh, yeah, and it's not like you're poking the bear or anything. You just you want to make sure that they know how to handle these things. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. It's their job. Yeah, you, like you don't have to run to the manager for every no. single slight issue. No. no. Like as as a manager, if I employed you, I would give you the the amount of trust needed to de-escalate a situation mm-hmm. with your guests. If you can find a solution for it, I'll back you up on that. Okay. Exactly. I will I will make sure that whatever you decide, as long as it's within reason. I mean, don't go buying oh. shots or drinks or an entire no. staff for somebody, you know. So real quick, and it, that just made me think of something. Yeah. I used to be a dealer in the casino, in a casino. Uh-huh. And uh, I was dealing blackjack. And it was on like a, a lower stance table. I think it was like a fifteen dollar buy in. Okay. And fifteen dollar buy ins, pat, always. Mm-hmm. Always, always, always. And I had this new guy at my table, which he was cool. Until he wasn't. He was awesome. Always how it's said. But like he was talking to people, which means he was distracted completely. So he lays down three hundred dollars on the table. Oh shit. To trade for chips. Mm-hmm. All right. So I traded out three hundred. So I pushed the chips and I counted to him. I show it to him and he's dicking off and he's talking to all of his buddies and all this that it was and, well, and like all the other players on my table are watching me uh-huh. to make you know because they people keep you honest like yeah. they want to know that they got their money well I was passing this three hundred dollars in chips I cash uh, I take the cash and I put it up and he looks at it, he's like no nah, I'll give you five hundred dollars I was like no nah, but this is three hundred dollars mm-hmm. and he looks at it and I was like I was like no nah, man like it's not and like the other players are trying to tell him like no. This is he counted it. He showed you, and you weren't and you weren't fucking listening. Like mm-hmm. they're irritated because they can't play right now. Mm-hmm. So he made such a big uproar about it. And he was like, "Well, he's like, run it back on the tapes, run it back in security, whatever." So my boss comes up to me. He's like, "He's like, did you really give him three hundred dollars, or like instead of five, or like?" Or, and he was asking me about the situation, and I was like, "Bud, I was like, I will put my job on it today. I was like, I'll take the ride up. I don't care. I was like, I know what I did, <laughs> and." Uh, I was like, and I'll own up to it. I was like, I know I didn't fuck that up. Uh huh. And, and my boss started laughing. He's like, my man. He went over like he was going to call surveillance. Uh-huh. Like picks up the phone, nods his head twice, puts <laughs> puts it back on the hook, gets back. And he's like, surveillance said it's fine. But sorry. <laughs> oh shit! And That's like the like, AC. Hey, can you can you make it a little bit warmer in here? Yeah, absolutely. Goes to wall. Pushes, <laughs> like, just pushes the wall. There's nothing there. Yeah, does that feel better? You feel better? Yeah. Oh okay, my god! I can touch you. Uh, but guys, thank y'all so much. This episode was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, can't wait to hear from you guys next week. If you have any feedback, uh, email us at bs and bar shifts at yahoo.com. Yes. And uh, we'd like to no, Gmail. 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 Dot, uh, Gmail. Gmail. And we're slacking. Uh, Gmail.com. Uh, and stay tuned for another episode.